Hey folks, in this exercise we are going to experiment with the ModFlow solvers to learn some of the tricks uh, you can use with solvers to get your model to converge or to deal with uh, dry cells, which can, can be a fairly common experience uh, using ModFlow. So uh, we are going to revisit the, the Fremont River model that we used before. And uh, to start out, we are going to uh, download and unzip this uh, startfiles.zip. Now, I've, I've already done that, and uh, so I'm going to open the resulting set of files. Let's see, go right here. And uh, when you do that, when you un unzip that zip archive, there's a, a GMS project called Dry Wells. And so I'm going to open that up. And <clears throat> let me zoom in. Let me frame this image a little better. And I'm also going to uh, change this background color a little bit to something that's white. I think that'll stand out a little better. So here's our model. As you may recall, there's a constant head boundary condition on the right. Uh, we have this T-shaped drain in the middle, uh, a couple of uh, agricultural wells, and then we have recharge uh, going into the model. Let me expand all the contents here. And um, so let's see, I don't have this. Let me run ModFlow real quick. And uh, we'll look at our solution. So this is what the default solution looks like. Let me change the contour options so you can get a feel for it. Um, <clears throat> And uh, what's happened when I, this looks mostly normal relative to what we did before. Um, there, there's one difference, but before I get to that, I should mention that uh, uh, in our instructions here, it said this model is the same as before, except the bottom elevations have been changed from 250 to 280. So just for comparison, let's, let's go back to the bottom elevations and uh, let's change it to 250 just to see the original solution before we get too far along here. And so I'll save that and run it. So uh, this is what the original solution looks like. You have these, this cone of depression around these two wells and uh, pretty significant cones of depression. And um, if you look at the flow budget, you'll see that we have um, uh, 750 cubic meters per day going out to the wells and the rest going to the constant head boundary condition on the right and to the drains. So now let's go back and let's see we change this to uh, uh, from 250 to 280 so that was our change and then when we save and uh, run the model uh, right away you should notice that those two big cones of depression are gone and uh, if we go look at the flow budget you'll see that the wells uh, instead of being minus 750 it's gone to zero so um, let me zoom out just a little bit so we can uh, see what's going on here Put a little space there there we go if you look down at the symbols here you'll see uh, we have this red rectangle saying we have dry cells and what's happened is if you zoom in around these wells uh, the cells containing the wells have gone dry um, you can notice that on each of these two uh, cells and so we're using the standard modflow uh, bcf package um, or excuse me lcf package block center or layer property flow and um, what happens in this case is when we we uh, brought up the elevation of the the bottom layer, we we basically made the aquifer thinner, and by so doing, uh, we created a, a, a hydraulic condition where the wells were not able to pump the uh, the pumping rate that we specified. So what happens is, 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 is it starts to iterate and it begins pu pumping 
the water table goes down and it gets basically we suck the wells dry um, and the the water table once the simulated head in a cell goes below the bottom elevation uh, modflow turns it off and uh, um, you know basically is stays off and so is that the solution we want well maybe you know the the reason this happens uh well actually there could be a number of reasons that it happens one of the one of the things it could be is sometimes uh when you um if your starting head value is is high and uh it, it could be that that eventually this could converge to a solution where the head value where the head in the cell is just above the bottom elevation but if it starts out high on the first iteration with the iterative solver it might move that head down too far and it move it below the bottom elevation and the cell turns off that's called a head overshoot problem so the first thing uh, we got to ask ourselves is is this a head overshoot problem now it could be that no matter what we do um, those wells just aren't going to be able to pump with these conditions we've set up maybe the hydraulic conductivity is too low pumping rates too high we need more recharge could be a lot of things that you can adjust during the calibration phase uh, of your simulation but uh, um, this that's what we're going to uh, investigate to try to figure out um, so before you decide that uh, you know it, it's a situation where the wells just can't handle it hydraulically and then I'm going to show you some solutions we can use for that we need to rule out this head overshoot problem and so typically the way you deal with there are a couple things you can do with head overshoot uh, you can lower the starting head to where it's closer to the bottom um, and I guess we, we could try that first of all so the bottom elevation is 280 let's go look at our starting heads our starting heads are um, 317 um, now let's put our starting heads to be uh, let's see 290 so maybe just 10 meters above the bottom and see what happens there I'll save and run that and uh, nope we got the same solution so lowering the starting heads didn't help uh, another thing we can try is we can go into the PCG solver which is our default solver and we can change our uh, acceleration or relaxation parameter uh, this uh, in most solvers, this is called the acceleration parameter, and the PCG package is called the relaxation parameter. Uh, it's a number that is defaulted to one, and it represents the, the how big of a step it takes when adjusting the heads in each cell during an iteration of the solver. And so, if if we change that down to like 0 0.1, what that says is, okay, guess how far you need to move the cell, and then only move it a tenth of that. So it makes makes the solver converge more slowly but it makes it more stable it doesn't take such big steps and sometimes go too far and cause a a cell to go dry by moving the head too far so let's try that and see if that does anything well it still converged pretty quickly and uh, nope that didn't solve it um, you know sometimes you can uh, try a different solver um, so let's try let's try a different solver let's go into uh, the uh, global options and packages and uh, let's try the SIP solver that one sometimes does the trick and again we'll go into the SIP package dialog let's change the acceleration parameter. let's get really conservative let's change it to 0.01 change our maximum iterations to 500 because we're going to do a lot of time steps here and you'll see it goes and goes and goes and oops never did converge so that's not going to work um, let's try maybe we've got the acceleration parameter too small let's change it to 0.1 instead of 0.01 save our changes run mod flow Ah, it did converge, finally.
but still going dry. So uh, at this point, it's pretty safe to say that we've ruled out head over shoot and uh, we have uh, caused a condition where these cells, or, or we have a, you know, basically with the, with the aquifer that thin and with the pumping rate that high, it just can't handle that. So uh, what do we do now? Well, uh, you know, again, in, in a real life scenario, it probably means uh, your pumping rate is too high uh, or your K value is too low. Now, if you have a local scale, if, if, if you have a model where the cells aren't terribly large, in, in this case, I think they're uh, 50 by 50 meters or 40 by 40 meters. Um, uh, something you can play with just for fun is I'm, I'm going to select a different uh, uh, array here so that I can select these dry cells. And I'm going to double click on that cell and I'm going to change the K value uh, to. Uh, let's see, let's try the K value is 0 0.1. Let's change it to 10 in that cell. I'm going to change it in this cell to 10. So um, basically the K values are 0.1 everywhere except uh, for these two cells where the wells are. Uh, we have changed the value to 10, so increased it a couple uh, orders of magnitude and uh, just in those cells so now let's save and uh, run here let's see um, that's still dry but I, I want to let's change the solver back to the uh, PCG2 solver to see if that uh, makes a difference and uh, let's see save and run Huh. And look at that. Aha. So by changing the solver back to PCG2 and then increasing the K value in those cells, we were able to, to get a solution and uh, check the flow budget. We've got the full pumping rate. Um, again, uh, the depth to which that cone of depression drops is a function of the hydraulic conductivity and the lower the hydraulic conductivity the the deeper that cone of depression goes so by increasing the k value in the cell um, it made it so that that you're able to pump uh, that rate that's specified without drawing the water table down as far and so you know it makes sense if, if the soil is more permeable you can you can pull the water through more rapidly without such a huge change in head. Now, the big question is, is this legitimate? Have we just, you know, fudged the numbers here? Um, well, it just, it could uh, lead you in a direction where you increase the K and may, maybe reduce the recharge as part of a calibration process. Um, should you ever just change the K value directly around a cell? Well, you could argue that, you know, when you develop a well, uh, it flushes the fines out in, in the region surrounding the well and makes it uh, slightly more permeable around the well. Um, I'd be a little careful with that, but I can see in certain circumstances where you can maybe justify that. Uh, but it turns out there's another way we can attack this problem. And uh, I'm going to go back to the HK array and I'm just going to put everything back to 0 0.1. Whoops. 0 0.1. So now we're back to our original K values. And then we're going to go into the global options. And instead of using uh, ModFlow 2000, we're going to use ModFlow NWT. OK. Um, and we're going to turn on the Newton solver. So it's a two-step process. <clears throat> um, ModFlow NWT is a special version of ModFlow that uses a different solver, a Newton solver. And uh, the primary advantage of it is it deals uh, uh, with dry cells or cell wetting and drying much more elegantly. And uh, let's see if that solved it in this case. So let's save our changes and run. And uh, so now we have the original K value of 0 0.1.
But now the cells are not dry. We have uh, normal looking cones of depression. And so it appears this has solved our problem with these particular wells. Um, so let's go look at something, however. If we go look at the flow budget, then you will see something interesting. The specified pumping rate combined of the two wells was minus 750, but if you look in the flow budget, it's uh, 708.7. So uh, something's happened. Uh, what happens is the Newton solver uh, automatically reduces the pumping rate in your wells just enough so that it can uh, uh, keep a, a solution and not go dry. And uh, so that's a, a really nice feature of the Newton solver. It's, uh, it uh, deals quite uh, powerfully with um, cell wetting and drying issues. I mean, there are certain cases where a cell really needs to go dry that um, you know, I, we, we can put in a pumping rate big enough that there's just no way it will handle it. But in this case, by reducing it from 750 to 708, it actually kept the wells uh, on. And, and but you got to be careful. Uh, you need to always look at your flow budget to understand what's happened. And there, there's also in the, in the output file from the ModFlow NWT, it'll tell you what it's doing. But uh, so anyway, so we've learned some things. We learned that uh, if you have cells going dry, at your wells, uh, you should always check to see if it's just a simple head overshoot problem that you can fix by lowering the starting heads or reducing the acceleration parameter. Uh, you could arguably increase the hydraulic con conductivity in those cells. I'd be recommend being really careful about that for the reasons we've discussed. And then, you know, another option is to turn on the NWT solver. That uh, that can fix a lot of problems associated with wetting and drying. So you do have a lot of uh, tools in your arsenal. But by golly, those cells did not